Let's get this going, folks. I'm so excited to be here with you at the end of my day, end of yours. Thanks for your, uh, making the time here to learn more about math and technology with me. Help me out with my learning too. Really appreciate folks who have taken some time to enter some thoughts about what they love about teaching um, into the chat, really pumping me up with your comments here. Uh, folks talking about how they love helping students understand who are struggling and being a part of their transformational story. And wow, isn't it wild how teachers who are able to transform students' impressions of themselves often wind up transform themselves. I'm just loving that about teaching right now and love hanging out with teachers. So um, if we have never met, you and me, uh, I am Dan Meyer. I'm a former public high school math teacher, a former researcher and current chief academic officer here at Desmos. Where I work with a team of amazing engineers, amazing designers, and amazing former classroom teachers trying to help students learn math and love learning math. This is a webinar um, for people who are mostly new to Desmos. You've heard of it. You know Desmos if it walked past you in the hallway. Uh, you may have dabbled a little bit, uh, but you're looking to take your Desmos usage to the next level. Uh, we'll focus today on grades 6 through 12 mathematics. So if you are someone who um, has used Desmos more than casually, um, or if you are a, a elementary educator, this might not be uh, the webinar for you. No hurt feelings at all if you need to punch out at, at any time. Uh, we'll offer something for you um, in the near future. So um, here is the agenda for our brief time together. Um, some words on why Desmos, first of all, from me. Um, but but uh, I know that um, People, teachers, students learn best, not when they hear someone talking about some big ideas, but when they have direct experience with those ideas and have time to reflect and talk about them. So you'll then experience Desmos as a student. The two reasons, my two why Desmos reasons put into action with you folks as students. Um, and then you'll have a moment to learn more about Desmos as a teacher, so, uh, starting wherever you are in your development and then going a bit further um, over about 10, 15 minutes. Well, some time for Q&A and then um, some next steps where you might go next. So um, here's, before we get into the, the, the why Desmos, I would say, I, I'm really curious what you folks have seen um, with technology, digital technology, let's be clear about that because paper is a fantastic technology, has been for a long time, but digital technology in classes you've taught in or observed. So I'd love for you folks to find um, the chat window and type a response to the following question. Uh, we're going to do this pretty quickly. Just want to get a, just a real quick sense of what you folks have seen and witnessed and what you worry about. So first question is this, um, how have you seen technology help student learning in math class? Um, I'm changing it so it's uh, digital technology. And here's the deal, um, don't press enter, just type it in. And then um, in about one minute, I'll say, go for it. And you'll press it. Think on it, type it, one minute. We'll see where each other is coming from. I love this. I love folks calling out things um, like connections, uh, both between other students and between math representations. Like we are here, you and me, connecting across time zones, continents, countries. Um, that's made possible by digital technology. Love seeing um, folks talk about uh, exploration uh, and interaction with uh, mathematical ideas. Precision, seeing patterns. Um, Automatic feedback shows up here. Yeah, interactivity, really helpful. Um, to shift gears to a, a, a bit more of a, of a grim, pessimistic kind of gear, I'd love to know now though, um, technology uh, at Desmos, we are not, we're actually fairly skeptical of digital technology. Uh, we love three things. We love students, we love math, we love technology in that order of priority, which is to say um, when there are forms of math instruction, um, that harm students. Uh, our love of math does not supersede our love of students. We disregard that kind of mathematical instruction. Um, and when there's technology that does damage and denigrates mathematics or does damage the students, we ignore that technology and run from it. We are very suspicious of technology. I'd love for you folks, again, type, don't press submit, type, don't press submit. How have you seen digital technology hinder student learning? What's the kind of technology that you and me, we ought to avoid? So he head to the chat. Type it in, don't press enter. I will call out a moment uh, in one minute where we'll see what each other has seen out there in the world. Yeah, this right here is uh, the Desmos report card for this session. Whatever we do here, however I treat you as students, I'm gonna look back at this and ask myself, um, 
did, for instance, according to Emily here, did the, the technology that we use here, did it um, create a lack of grit or perseverance in students, for instance? Like the answer was too immediate and they wanted it so fast. Or uh, Richard talks about technology that thinks in place of students. I'll, I'll wonder, how is your cognitive engagement in this mathematics? Did we do stuff for you? Um, or uh, uh, building walls between students. Is this, is this uh, technology does create social connection between us? And Damien, uh, just calling it out here, uh, and the functionality is just too cumbersome. Like I said, too, you're thinking about technology, not thinking mathematically when it reduces the math to one answer. This is a, a, a really thoughtful uh, group that we're working with here. I'm really excited to learn from and with you folks. Let's, I'm gonna bracket this, hold this off to the side for a second and think, come back to this and think about your answers as when we do some math ourselves. Um, so why Desmos? Um, a, a couple answers. One, one might be that it's on your state test. Like that might be a good reason for you to be here that your state test um, has Desmos as a button, either it's for function calculator, it's scientific calculator or it's graphing calculator on the state test. In California where I live, it's, uh, you know, you have the, the 11th graders take a test, end of the year, uh, you get the graphing calculator on it. Teachers should know um, about it, how to use it, how to get students using it, so that when they hit that test, the tool it does not distract from the mathematics. It, in fact, it enhances student math thinking. Let's get into that. Um, why Desmos? Also, it is, uh, it's free, free dollars, both on the website um, and in um, the Google Play uh, and, and app stores of, of all kinds, uh, iOS apps, Google uh, Android apps, um, you know, uh, Atari apps. I don't know, there's apps galore. How should I know what we have out there? All right, I got some links in the in the agenda for you folks. Here's the agenda. Uh, there's a there, there's some links in there for you folks to go, you know, go get them. Go get them right here. Uh, link to the state test website. You can see what's going on with your state. If we're not on your state test and you want it to be, you know, let me know. But maybe save that until after we've seen the whole demo here. See if you like this or not. Um, here's a couple reasons why I think Desmos is really powerful for you folks in classes. What I recommend for you folks is this: is that one is that Desmos um, helps students focus on math and not the tool. This is like um, students doing their classwork, students doing their homework, and, uh, and, and Desmos is a tool for whatever they're doing to help them focus on math and not the tool. Uh, for instance, here, this right here is a, a, a textbook problem from lightly, lightly modified a textbook problem of the sort that your students might see in an algebra, algebra 2 textbook. Um, nothing I'm super enthusiastic about if you know my work at all, but um, this is the stuff that gets assigned. And um, so students can have Desmos out on their phone, perhaps, in your class. Is that scary? Or uh, a laptop at home or a phone at home, if it's a phone in your classroom. I love seeing uh, teachers who require, who allow phones, but uh, invite students to put them flat on the desk. So they're kind of like visible to everybody what you're doing, you know, like not just like looking at your hip, uh, you know, smiling, laughing, and then you tell the teacher that you're doing Desmos when we know it's not true. Shoot, I'm sorry. Um, our, I'm pretty sure that our competitors got into the Wi-Fi on my home network and are trying to take our time down, but we won't let them. So Desmos.com has a um, start graphing button. And so what I'm thinking right here is uh, this is an area where ideally we just like our, we get out of the way of student thinking and invite them to think mathematically. Uh, I can pan this around this right here. I can um, zoom in, I can uh, zoom way in and then go back home. I can uh, set up some settings like projector mode, awfully helpful for uh, folks with low visibility uh, for vision impairment, change the X axis, Y axis, that kind of thing. But here's the deal, like it, there's no like mashing of, you know, the second alpha, second, second menu, left, right, choose option six to type in uh, an equation, even an implicit equation. Uh, what I can do right here is just like, Look at this um, right here and say, okay, I kind of get like how I'm going to set these up. So it's going to be um, three, $3.65 per game and then $4 is my, this is a linear model and $4 is my, uh, my y-intercept. So I can just type in real easily y equals 3.75 plus 4, uh, uh, x plus 4. There it is. Okay. And then um, back over here, this other one, Buster Bowling is 325 and 450. Let me see, 320. 325 x plus 450. And what can I tell when I zoom way in here? I can then um, click, just like there's no like, um, you know, where's the intersection? Let's uh, choose an estimate on the left side of the intersection, on the right side, and my best guess. And 10 minutes have gone by, and I'm only thinking about the tool and not about like what the meaning of this point is. What is the meaning of 1 and, and 7.75 uh, in the context of 
the story problem. Uh, so ideally, we make this as easy as possible. We get out of students' way and keep them focused on uh, the mathematics and the meaning of the math in the world. Uh, save the operations for the computers. The stuff that computers can't do is interpretation and converting this context right here into uh, those linear equations. That's the work for humans. Let's keep students on that. So I love that, that when um, students are doing their classwork or homework, this tool can help them focus on the math and not the tool. And you don't have to say to yourself like, uh, oh shoot, like it's not on your state test. Like they, they won't be able to use this on a state test um, provided that we are on your state test. If we're not there, um, let's get on that, you and me. Here is my other favorite way to use Desmos. And this is significantly more uh, uh, sophisticated and requires a lot of you folks. That's why I'm so excited to chat about with you. This requires some serious teachers who would show up after hours, think about uh, math and technology, doing some serious work. And that's this, is that um, we, I, um, a lot of us here think that math is um, so, uh, the, the point of math is to help students, one point of math is to help students puzzle and unpuzzle themselves. And those puzzles can be in a number of different uh, genres and contexts. There's puzzles in the world outside the classroom. Those are great. Um, there's social uh, social kinds of puzzles. Puzzles around like you know why uh, you know why do some people have uh, what seems to be inequitable outcomes and in, in health and wealth and how can we uh, unpuzzle ourselves about that? Come up with solutions. There's puzzles that are just like um, Sudoku style or just um, diagrammatic or numerical puzzles. Just like math itself is a context and can be a puzzle. But the idea is that um, this tool at its best gives students a way to puzzle and then unpuzzle themselves to like, it's just the most amazing thing. Math, what we can offer students is this, is that wherever you are, your brain is powerful enough to come up with a question that you've never answered before that can puzzle you and make that line at the DMV or whatever, um, you know, more interesting for yourself. Just your brain is a fantastic thing. Um, and then you could, you're, those same tools that help you puzzle yourself can then help you unpuzzle yourself. And here's what I mean by that. Here's, um, here's what I'm talking about, is I'm gonna uh, reload this and get a new calculator going. Check this out here. I'm gonna uh, just create a point, uh, two, three. There it is. But uh, uh, make this projector mode again. Um, and I can hold, hold down on this, uh, this red uh, circle here and do a few things. I can change the style of it, you know, change the color of it. We offer you folks, this is gonna blow your minds, six colors. I'm not even sure there's more than six colors out there. And we offer all of them to you folks. What's your favorite? That'd be blue, red, orange, green, or black. Um, let's choose purple here. Um, I'm going to choose uh, purple and I can make it draggable. I can drag this thing around right here like that. I can uh, restrict its draggability to uh, just vertical up and down. That's all it'll do. Now watch this here. I'm going to change this to an A and you know, the real heads out there know this means that it's going to be a variable. Like it's a, and we don't know what A is yet. And so Desmos is, is famous, notorious for its sliders. I can click on that A and now I have this slider. A is one and the point here is 2.43 and one. Great. I can uh, move this up and down, make that a, a negative value or below the x-axis, Move, make it positive or above the y-axis. I can drag it here and, this, uh, and, the, and the things will, will change in the other direction. Okay, um, so let me see here. What I wanna do now is this, is I'm gonna change A, not to a number, but rather to a list of numbers. So I'm curious, I'm gonna turn this off briefly and ask you folks, if I were to make this um, negative five and five, A is now a list of numbers. When I turn this point back on, what will happen? What will we see? Don't bother typing in the chat. We're not gonna be here long enough to do that. Um, but just think to yourself what it looked like. Did you imagine it would look like two points, both at 2.43? One at, with a y coordinate negative five and one at a, at a y coordinate of positive five. If you did, pat yourself on the back. Um, here's what my, my curiosity is. Um, what if we had points that were all the way up and down uh, this vertical line right here? What would that look like? How would we do it? And so what I could do is I could change this to say negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, and I'm tired, I'm bored. I'm tired and bored. It's not a good way to be. And so what I, what I can do instead is this. Here's the, the shorter, more efficient way to do this. We're always interested in keeping um, students and teachers attending to the math rather than the notation or the symbolism. And so here I can type in dot, 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 five, bam, ba, bam, just like that. 2.5, uh, three, love it. Um, I can, I, if I wanted to have more points here, more points, like say points at the half markings here, at the half markings, I wonder what you think we do for that. What would make sense to do in order to get points at negative five, negative 4.5, uh, negative four, et cetera. 
what you do is you just do negative 4.5 and tell it where that next one's going to be. And ta-da, here we go. It fills in the rest. It says, oh, you want it on every half. That's kind of fun. It's kind of nice, right? Here's my question for you is what if I made this A comma A? What is that going to look like? And if we're in class, we're having a much more social time than we are right now on Zoom. In class, you're going to chat with a neighbor. I'm going to invite you in pairs to think about what it'll be, to debate it. I think there's multiple, very reasonable, defendable answers to this question here. Desmos has chosen one particular direction with this, and that is to look like this. Huh? Did you see that coming? Did you see that coming? You can think about it as like, okay, here's negative five. Let's plot the point negative five, negative five. That's this one right here. Uh, negative 4.5, negative 4.5. That's this one right here. All the way to five, five. That's this one way up here and everyone in between. So what we're using Desmos for right here is um, what I sometimes call the what if machine or a conjecturing tool or a tool to help you and students puzzle and unpuzzle yourself around the objective for the day, whether that's linear equations or points or parabolas or thinking structurally. This is a tool that allows you to say, hey, what if we did this? And then invite students to think about it. Like for instance, um, folks, what, what if we did this right here? Negative A, negative A. What would that look like instead? Think on it. Feel like you got that? Check it out. But bam. What? No, hold up. There's no answer right. Hang on. You folks, you've seen me mess up before. Wi-Fi drop out. You don't know if I'm serious or not, if I'm seriously befuddled here. Um, I, I'm not befuddled. I do think this is bonkers cool though. That is exactly the same as A comma A. That's cool, right? Um, and it's not, this, it's not true that it's all the same points. It's not true it's all the same points. I don't think so anyway. I might be just a, getting semantical here. I don't know. But like the points are kind of reversed. Like negative five, negative five, that no longer results in the point right down here. Negative five results in the point five, five way up here. Is this kind of like zoop, going on? Had to see my web, webcam for that zoop, going on. So here's my question for you folks is, can you set this up? Can you go to desmos.com slash calculator or just click on calculator? And can you think about these right here? We just did one of these. We did, uh, we did this one right here, negative A comma, negative A. Um, but think of these other ones. What would they look like? And challenge yourself not to just type them in. Don't just like type them in and say, oh, I probably got that. Actually, um, you know, stretch your brain a little bit, make a prediction, and then type it in and see if you are right. And down here, I would let, there's a blank one right here. This is what I mean about you have the power to puzzle and unpuzzle yourself. Like come up with one that you yourself are not sure you know the answer to. Basically, um, you know, it says though, you know, God creates a rock that he himself is not sure he can lift yet. That's super cool. And then come up with your, with your best idea and um, see if you're right. And if you are able to post it in the chat for all of us to benefit from. Um, is that clear right there? Think on those and then verify your answer. And we're gonna spend about five minutes on this right here. Just do as many as you want to in five minutes. If you blast through all of them, um, then come up with your own. See you folks in five minutes. Chat in the chat about what you're up to if you want to. We got Jules in the chat with one that he says is quote unquote cool. A math teacher's math teacher, sine A, cosine A. I'm not gonna type it in. I'm gonna think about it myself first. Oh, I wanna think like wavy stuff. Feel free to post your own that are blowing your mind. I want to go play. But I keep the screen up for you folks, the questions. Uh, the chat, anyway, is a fantastic place to be. Uh, you got Janetta here who's talking about seeing students, trying to get students to get the vertical. Like, why is the vertical equation of a line x equals? like? We know that verticals always y, and um, that this could be a method by which students would come to understand. Um, I, I, get, I can see like 10 different ways this could go in a class where students would come to understand that all, all of our points that, have, that are on this vertical line have a, you know, x equals it's the same thing. Um, there's like 10 different cool ways I could go. Love it. Um, and uh, love seeing uh, Cecilia, who like 
who might have thought that negative a comma negative a would get that negative slope line and she's like not just taking this she's going to figure out how to get that so she played around until she got that one which is uh, also slick and then jules comes along and having this social and creative and puzzling moment says i got the same thing but with this other thing um, one of our core values at desmos is to try to create experiences where students can be right and wrong in different interesting ways um, so that you teachers you folks can uh, call it out oh shoot a squared a squared that one it blows my mind this one uh, i forgot about this one this is this one i saw once before one time from uh krista thanks for coming along from uh from mexico krista right uh, this one oh my gosh a squared a squared comma a squared you know, like if you've done any kind of work recently in, in algebra, you're like, oh, s squared stuff. It's a, it's a curve, it's like a, a parabola, right? Quadratic parabola. Um, that's so wild, but it's not, but it's not that. Think about it, try it yourself. I'm not gonna show what it is. Oh yeah, that one really freaked me out one time. I don't, I've, sine A, cosine A, I gotta just like do it. Cause I, I'm thinking of a sinusoid, but uh, is it a circle? Oh, it's a circle, but the points aren't evenly spaced. What is going on here? Uh, anyway, so I'm not sure how this works across every subject you teach. Oftentimes it's the more graphically oriented subjects uh, in secondary math where this would be most useful, but think about it, like how we can uh, invite students from puzzled and then unpuzzled in ways that lead not just like a, like a fun time together, but actually towards you know, mathematical objectives that you have to teach. Like what is a parabola? How does a parabola become what it is? Um, could this be helpful here? Um, linear equations, like, um, so you're working on proportional equations, y equals 2x. Well, if we add a term to that, add six, add three, whatever, subtract four, um, what happens to that line? What if folks, in, uh, instead of, you know, uh, uh, bop, 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 you folks are fine with graphing y, equal, uh, y equals 3x, but here's what I wanna ask you folks here. here here's what if we did y equals 3x? You know what it is, uh, but we also did minus four. What if we subtracted four? That what if machine move um, has just so many positive effects on students. Um, you know, assigns them loads of confidence as thinkers. Uh, you know, creates moments of conversation in, in mathematics. Uh, takes them seriously. Anyway, um, love that. What I'd love for you folks to do is to take um, take ten minutes here, ten minutes, and I'd love for you folks to. to wherever you are right now to now spend some time learning Desmos as a teacher. So we have this, uh, this link right here, which I'm going to uh, paste into the chat. You can look at other people's like super slick ideas in the chat that they offered. Um, but I'd love you folks to take some time. And it's just nice to have dedicated time. You carve this time out for yourself. Take 10 minutes and do a new thing for yourself. Develop some new competency wherever you are at. Um, so in this uh, Google Doc, once you go there, you're going to see um, uh, uh, just a checklist of items starting from beginner to intermediate to advanced. Um, so like you can plot a point in each quadrant and turn on their labels. This might be something you can do right this second, no problem. So don't do it. Skip ahead. Find one where you're not sure how to do it and then uh, make that happen for yourself. Develop a new competency. You can uh, ask questions in the chat or also also share your wins. I'd love to hear some pride and accomplishment here. Share something new you're able to do over the course of 10 minutes. All clear? Over to you folks for 10 minutes. We'll see you back at 540 roughly. Got like four minutes left. Uh, I'm so excited for three things right now. One, um, Jocelyn who uh, helped our French Canadian folks with a French translated version of that scavenger hunt. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear from um, Krista and Janetta that this was a helpful scavenger hunt for them. And finally, I am so happy that so many folks out there, I can feel you uh, developing new brain cells, neurons, dendrites, whatever, and um, learning how to be awesome using Desmos. Um, so I'd love to hear in the chat, like what you folks are up to. Smash that um, save graph button and, um, and share a link if you feel like you have something you like, wanna say like, hey, this is what I learned how to do, and we will celebrate you. Um, three minutes, we'll come on back together uh, for some Q&A, next steps. I'll share with you what I uh, just refreshed myself on um, what to do in Desmos, and we'll go from there. Extremely cool. Um, 
Deanna, sorry if I missed that, um, will is asking if the hunt is available afterwards. Emily's planning on working through the entire thing as part of a, uh, a course, uh, some continuing ed units. Yes, yes, uh, we love it. It's available after this. Um, love to know what support you need. Um, Chris has made a copy, but uh, yeah, feel free. This is uh, here for you folks to learn and develop. Um, we had Richard who created a scatter plot and regression line. Check that out right there. Lots of fun things going on. Um, this right here, wow, what a pain to have to type in all of that data one at a time. Actually, you have this data in a Google Sheet. You can copy it, paste it, and we'll um, load that right up there for you. Um, my French is uh, rusty to non-existent, actually, but this looks like um, automobile uh, crashes in Canada, um, and it appears to be going down over time, which uh, looks fantastic to me. Good job, Canada. Uh, I, I salute you. Um, uh, what I was up to here is... Um, is, I, you know, I wanted to like figure out how I could use images. I saw that in the, in the beginner list. And I was like, wait, do I know how to do that? So I grabbed myself, I went online and I searched for a basketball image. I grabbed that right there. I like, I wanted, I, I wanted to, I know basketballs like move on a parabolic path. But I wanted to like create for myself like a Y equals negative one fifteenth X squared or something. Just like create like a, a parabolic arc or something. Uh, minus 10, zoom out like that. And have the ball move along that path. Like I want to, I wanted to like, you know, to take this and uh, have it, move along this path. And I know here that what we have is we have like different things I can type into. I can sliderize any of these right here. So I could like, um, you know, sliderize the angle and make, uh, you know, or slide the width, turn the width into a, a slider. And now like when I drag the slider, it like, you know, changes the width. That's pretty slick, right? Um, I could also say I want the center of this to be kind of like tied to a function like this right here. So I change that to f of x. I can make this uh, f of x. Uh, f of x is a function. It, it has like it has two variables. Like it, there's the input and the out. Anyway, I need to like I need to like create a time variable. Like, like or like any like a equals zero. And then I want um, the y value to be f of a. Whatever a is. Let me see. Does that work? F of a. What have I done wrong here? What have I done? F of x. I thought I had this, folks. Who can tell me what I am not doing right here? If I make that. A. F of A. Why is the Y coordinate scanning change it F of A in the function line? F of A. A F of A. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, I want I want it not it's it's actually doing what it told it to do. It's you know it's it's a very powerful but not very smart system. It needs our smarts applied to this. So someone told me like, yeah, it's it's going up parabolically, but the x coordinate needs to be changing and going forward also. Change that to a, and so now I press this and it starts to go forward like that right there. If I want this to go faster, I can um, change the speed right here, juice this up a little bit, make it move quicker. I can only go forward, let's say. Um, oh, too fast, too fast. It's freaking me out. I can change the, the, um, the upper bound of this and the lower bound of this so it's like zero to 100 or something. So it only, only goes from zero to 100 all the way down, just like that right there. Anyway, hey, um, love two things here. One, you folks helping me out. Thanks, Michael uh, in particular. Kurt also spotted me there. Um, and love also that Jeanette is like, I thought those were so hard to create. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just math and putting the math in the right places with animation. Very cool stuff. So um, at this point, what I'd love to do is to, I'd love to know what kind of questions would be, uh, what, what questions you have here. There's some folks on the line who know a pile about Desnos. So your questions might be more logistical, you know, how to use them, um, you know, how to use them in classes, how to use them in test mode or practice mode, um, questions like that sort of thing. Or you might just be here just to hang out with cool people on a, on a Tuesday night doing cool math, cool tools. Uh, your questions might be on a different kind of level. Like how do you do X, Y, or Z in a calculator? My answer might be, I don't know, but I'd love to hear it. So what I'll invite you folks to do is to not type them. Let's just see. Um, we're gonna try this out. If you go to this website, which I've used once before and loved, um, sly.do. We have a bunch of folks here. So uh, what, I'm, what I'll welcome you to do is to go to that website and type in um, this hashtag. It lets you type in, you can type in a question or comment. And then here's the important part. So that we know where the inquisitive energy of this group is at, I need you folks to hit that, to smash the thumbs up button next to questions that you think need an answer or observations that you think are particularly sharp. Does that make sense? This right here, 
you'll see everyone's comments and questions, no censorship, no filtering. So, you know, keep it cool. And then um, start hitting that, that thumbs up button on questions that seem like, yeah, that was my, that's mine. I'm, I'm there with you and, um, or don't enter a question and just press the thumbs up button. And in um, five minutes, I will less than that. In three minutes, I'm gonna um, pick up the questions that seem like I have the most energy uh, given our limited time together. Typing the website and the hashtag into our chat. I'm gonna go over and see what is what. This can be comments or questions, questions or comments. Questions are coming in. People are voting, ranking them up and down. We likely have time to cover all these so far. Any others? I'm gonna start answering a couple in a moment. Yeah, see, I knew I love this group. You know, you got questions that are important around like how to, how to do this and that. That's important stuff. Uh, but this is the group that came together after after school hours for most of us here. Um, and there's a big question at the top there. Like, how do you change teacher mindset when it's like, they say Desmos does everything for the student, but it's not a powerful instructional tool. Great question. Um, let's jump on it, folks. Ooh, so fun. Um, okay, so here's a here's a, a, an easy one first uh, for me. Easier one for me is like, how do you create the basketball? How do you upload the basketball image? Um, and that is or you, this plus symbol here, which we didn't spend a lot of time on. Um, you, you can add expressions, add a note like, um, hey, here's my basketball image. Done. Um, like just text to describe things. You saw that in um, the accident. Uh, this one right here. Our colleague uh, speaking French here, I assume, um, is just adding uh, exposition, explanation, some commentary about the data or the graph. Um, if that is, if this is offensive to French speakers, I, I apologize. I have no way of knowing. And then, um, so uh, you can then like press that plus and uh, press image and ba boom, there you go. There's your image. A new one um, has stepped up. Drag it, stretch it. Um, someone wanted to know, like, can you like share that with me? Um, because like, I, don't, I just want to like know, play from what where you started. Um, and so there is a link in the chat. The chat now has a link to my calculator. Um, and then to a, a more serious question, love it. Um, back over here, uh, changing mindsets of teachers. Like, uh, so uh, Michael, uh, practicing classroom teacher, uh, leader in Michigan, uh, invites us to start thinking more inquisitively first before trying to change teachers, which I think is fantastic. I'd be curious how they feel about traditional graphing calculators is Michael's question. Because in one sense, um, you know, it, someone who is uh, in favor of traditional graphing calculators should should have a should not have that reservation about they they are similarly powerful in lots of different ways. Um, we would argue that, that ours um, does not require students to memorize or learn about quite so much, um, you know, button pressing or recipes for you know navigating the technology, um, but. When I when I want to like change or learn more about or influence the mindset of teachers, I'll tell you the thing I do every time is just to involve them as students in a learning experience of the sort that you experienced just now, and the reactions that you felt um, are they are partially that, that enthusiasm is partially related to the fact that you are here as a volunteer in this uh, you know evening session. True, um, but teachers who are skeptical or cynical also can experience this sense of like wonder and joy in mathematics. Um, the tool did not do everything for you. In fact, you could tell every student, you know, don't have your calculator out. Um, in that experience that we just had, um, I could trust you folks to think about it first and then verify your answers. Um, but I would not have students with technology out during this time. It would just be me and the laptop and the projector and trying to create conversation through that technology. And it's definitely not doing work for the students. It's doing the work for the teacher of perplexing and provoking students. 
So, um, yeah, Janetta, who was, uh, I, I believe Janetta's a, a coach in the East Coast, maybe North Carolina, I forget, um, is someone who like works with teachers and sees that like, yeah, there's a similar kind of resistance to Desmos as there was for graphing calculators back in the day. Um, other questions here. Um, <laughs> I love these questions about, uh, so I came by to learn more about activities, um, creating them, using them. Um, love that. Um, I'm a little bummed that the the message didn't get out that this was a calculator session. Um, I'm jealous of the folks who get to run the activities. Um, before I came to Desmos and then brought a team with me, there was only the calculator. I mean, my team has been hard at work building an activity builder with engineers and designers, obviously, um, but also a, a set of core instructional activities. So I'm so excited about that. I, I would love for you folks to join us um, uh, a week from today to first um, learn about running Desmos activities on the 10th. And then on the 17th, if you wanna learn more about building activities, um, join us then. On the 10th, like running activities, it's, it's like strapping yourself into a, a really powerful kind of exoskeleton set of armor and tools. Like it's like, it's, it can be an enormously power, empowering experience if you know how to use the Desmos activities. Um, new ways to facilitate math learning in classes. It can also be like really challenging and, and stressful if you don't know how to do it. So I encourage you to show up for that and then building on the 17th. Other questions I can handle here uh, with you folks before we say so long. Um, da -da 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 -da, got those right there. Um, yeah, I think we're like pretty good on uh, activities. Computation layer, I don't know if that will be covered in any kind of detail. Um, my colleague Jay Chow uh, and John Rowe uh, will be uh, eventually creating a, a, a learning experience in January. Webinars around computation layer are really fancy activity building technology. I think that's about it here for now. Please use the scavenger hunt in any way you want to. I, I Stop asking permission to do stuff with that. Just take it, run with it, copy it, download it, print it, mail it, fax it. Don't care what. It's there for uh, all of our learning. Um, great. Love it. Geometry tools will are unlikely to show up in the graphing calculator in the near future. We might add coordinates to the geometry tool before the geometry comes to the graphing tool. It's a little bit unclear to me at this point. Um, that's it. Uh, question about the ACT. Um, will the ACT ever have Desmos embedded as a tool? Um, in fact, the a Desmos is on the digital ACT right now. If your students take the ACT digitally, Desmos is on it. What? That's wild, right? Um, on the paper, not currently, but this stuff changes when you folks squawk about it. So uh, get in touch and let me know if uh, I can put you in touch with people who are receptive to teacher squawking about great tools on tests. We would love to be a part of that with you folks. Some next steps right now, I'll leave you time to take them. Uh, next steps for you folks in our document, you'll find learn.desmos.com, which has some, um, some tips about um, all the above, graphing, calculator, geometry, et cetera. Support um, has articles uh, about how to use this stuff and a place to ask questions. We have a Facebook group which is linked in our uh, agenda. That's a place to ask questions and uh, have more, more social interaction there. Um, let's see, question in the comments about uh, next week's webinar, how to, how to register for it. I think Stephanie, um, Stephanie Blair, our head of PD is on the line and she can uh, copy and paste that link into the chat, hopefully quick. If not, I'll uh, dig that up myself. I forgot to add that. So there's some follow-up links for you folks. Um, and then also, uh, We'll leave this here. I would love for you folks to, if, if this seems like work you want to see in your schools, this kind of session in your schools, in your district, if you would like an in-person kind of event, we are trying to figure out how to support teachers in this kind of change. We've done a lot of this work. We'd love to work with you folks, uh, partner with you. So head to that link also on our agenda and uh, bring someone out. We'll get in touch with you. Uh, finally, it's been a, a treat to work with you folks. This, um, this right here, this link has a quick survey asking you how this went for you, um, were your needs met, what else would you love to learn about? Your submissions here will dictate the kinds of PD that we'll offer in the future. So please uh, use the rest of our time, five minutes here, um, to uh, toss something into the chat if you wanna chat about it, um, and or take this uh, really brief survey right here, survey. Thanks so much, folks. It's just a, a, a blast, a treat to learn with you folks here on a Tuesday night. Thanks for being here. Stephanie's got that reg link for next week's webinar in, in the chat. Toss that into our agenda.
Leslie asked about Tennessee. Leslie, um, let's get in touch. Uh, hit me up via, e via email. Uh, Michael, love to hear about squawking in Michigan. I've got your contact info. We'll be in touch. Here's Tiffany asked about the agenda. Stephanie's on it faster than me. Thank you, Murray. I appreciate you. Take care now. Tracy, New York. We are we're gonna we're gonna make this happen. We got some some angles we're taking right now. Um, you know, Jojo already got a pilot in there. Jojo is loud. Um, we're gonna follow the the path they uh, they carved out into the woods, and we'll um we'll we'll do the same thing. I'm I'm feeling pretty good about uh, New York there. Stay tuned, Damien. Thanks for being here all the way from Australia. Where it is my word, what time? Um, current time, Sydney, the city I know in Australia. All right, all right, 1 p.m. All right, on a Wednesday though, school day, good deal. Jocelyn, thanks for being here. Emily, so long. This is not like uh, one of those Marvel movies where at the end of the credits, there's like the actual really cool thing that happens. Like the cool stuff happened. Um, if folks have questions or wanna chat, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you later. Anu, thanks for being here. Kurt, thanks for your help. Good looking out. Emily, so long. Cecilia, thank you. 